guys and welcome back to Limitless Speaks. My name is Dara and I'm joined by two lovely guests. Precious and Lydia. And I'm sure you've been keeping up. We've been speaking recently about the names of God. And today we're going to be doing a brand new one, which is El Roy. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so first of all, I mean, we start very basic. So we don't assume that everyone knows what it means. So can someone please explain to us what El Roy means? So they will. Lydia will. <laughs> Al Roy means God who sees me. Wow, beautiful. And can someone like let us know the backstory Precious behind <laughs> <laughs> behind El Roy? Yeah. Okay. So the backstory is um, after Sarah gave Hey Guy to um, Abraham to have a child. I think she started kind of feeling reproached towards her. And at some point, when she had conceived the child, I think when she was still pregnant, she kicked her out. Um, of the house and I think she was just kind of there in the middle of nowhere in the desert <laughs> and God actually you know I think God sent like an angel to her yeah um and I think she was just marveled at that how God literally you know saw her in her situation um I, I think there was a well like he pointed it was that from the story because I, I mean I was reading I didn't see a well mm -hmm. but I think there was probably a well but yeah that's kind of how that name came from where Edgar just kind of was like you know this is the God who sees me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Real deep. And I remember I was literally like looking the story up on Google because obviously I know it in the Bible, but I was looking at someone like talking about the story and someone was literally like that Hagar was verbally assaulted and like also sexually assaulted. She was. And I, I was like, that. we actually don't talk about no, that I because that. she actually went through a lot. Like for me, I was just like, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> it actually got a bit deep. No, but like I if you actually like understand the yeah. severity of the story, because I think we understand it is... Yeah. We don't always relate it to our time because it's it's so far gone. But mm -hmm. like if you actually start to think, oh, actually, she went through it because it's yeah. the thing of like, literally, you know, they had this promise. We're going to have a child. It wasn't seen like it was coming to pass. Sarah was like, hey, I know a girl like, like do as you please. Do you understand? I mean, I mean, then they were kind of like property in that sense. Mm -hmm. Um, So it was it was a really, really tough story, actually, when yeah. you think about it. And so she's in the desert with her child no provision no nothing and see someone and has that reminder of no i'm god and i see you even if nobody else does so it's that really really um deep aspect to the story that we don't talk about i cut you off when you were saying it but give your own also like perspective of that no no, no you didn't cut me off you just sparked something that i actually noticed i feel like mm -hmm. i've read it like a lot of times mm -hmm. and like you said sometimes we just read it and kind of brush past it but i was like pause she was like have my maid yeah, like literally. go ahead and i was like and the thing about me like i normally just you know try to look at it like how it's happened you know like when you watch a movie you see how it happened i was just like this girl was probably a virgin mm. or she probably had like her life as well or whatever she she was a human being she has a free yeah. will and then for you to just be like have the maid and go have a child and not just that from something you wanted to happen initially you're just cursing at the girl abusing her and be yep. like you know what get out so i was like hold on yeah. sarah so i think that's that's something i learned in that particular scripture is even though god had a promise to abraham to make him the father of many nations it's never going to be at the expense of someone else Mm. because that's when, when God came back it felt like you know he was trying to redeem something mm. Sarah had manually done mm. of course she, she tried to fulfill a promise or she tried to fulfill something you know by her own will and mm. God was like you know what I need to fix this I need to you know there need to be a remedy so I think I get how that name literally come because it's like in all that unfair situation God had no business with her guy but he was like you know what yeah. Yeah. And even like in verse 11, it says that you shall call his name Ishmael because the Lord has heard your affliction. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to move on in a second. But I think this story is really, really poignant yeah. in that aspect where not only did she call the place the place where God saw me, mm -hmm. but also the name of her offspring yeah. was because God also heard her and yeah. in that tough place that she was at. So that's not the only I mean, that's the time in the Bible where it says that God saw me. Mm -hmm. But there are so many other examples that I feel like God shows up as El Roy. So can we think of other examples in the Bible where you feel like some people were overlooked, but God went out of his way to prove that he saw them? Do you want me to go first? Yeah. <laughs> but maybe I'll steal one of yours though, because I have really like common ones. <clears throat> one of them is David. Yeah. yeah. I, oh, I should have said that. I should have said the other one. It's fine. It. Is, is David where um, Saul had to go out Samuel had to go out and mm -hmm. look for um, the next yeah. you know, king. And so he went and then he was like to Jesse, hey, bring me your kids. 
And he's like, oh, yeah, they're all here. And then God was like, no, no, like, no, 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 no. So he's like, hold on. Are you sure, though? He was like, nah, actually, there's one in the back. Like, he wasn't even considered as a son. A child, Do you understand? Yeah. To, to be qualified to even stand on the line. Because he's mm -hmm. only looking for one case. It's not like all of them are even qualified. But you just have to bring what you have. And he didn't even count, yeah. you know. And God was with him where he was. God was with him in every single step of the way as well. So that's someone who I feel like God showed up personally to be like, nah, I see you. Um, even if other people don't. More examples. Do you want me to help you? No. Okay. Um, Precious can just go first. <clears throat> but I think, um, funny enough, you guys, I think I like the way you guys kind of looked at it from, from, you know, you're not even considered to, you know, God sees you. Because mm. I, I think when I was kind of prepping and, and planning for this, the way I was going to look at it was from that point of unfairness, right? Yeah. And there's two examples, and if I give this two example now, that's all I have to say oh, for the entire well, video. But we can, we can <laughs> start talking later. <laughs> but there's there's one, there is um, somewhere in the book of Psalms, I think this is when there was a three year famine in the land when David was king. And David was like, hold up God, like what's going on? What's the famine about? And then God said to him that it was because Saul had killed these family, like these people from this family, that's why whatever it's happening, I'm trying to see if I can find it. And it was like, that's why you, there's this famine. So, you know, in that instance, it was like, although God loved David and, you know, David was a man after God's heart, God was still fair to these other people. Saul had literally massacred their knowledge, right? And because of that, you know, God obviously told David that, listen, this is the reason why go fix things. And it was like, God also saw and saw those people in their pain and, you know, was not unfair and wasn't unjust to them. Um, Another kind of place, uh, another kind of example, I think, this is not so much of like unfairness. I think it's interesting because you know, Nathan is it Nathaniel? Yeah, like one of Jesus' disciples, when Jesus was like, oh, I saw you when you were under the fig tree. Do we know that story? <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. No, it was, I think, uh, I can't remember who it was. I think it was Philip, like he, he, obviously back then Jesus was choosing his disciples still at the early stage. And it was like, this is an, a man who there is no like faults, like a man who there's no gall or whatever you pronounce that. But he was under the fig tree. Nothing crazy was happening. To be fair, you'd have seen it on the chosen. The chosen. <laughs> Not you confess to watch it. <laughs> Not yeah. Yeah. You. But like, when you get there, you see. But I mean, nothing hap nothing was happening to him. Mm. But I think when you read that scripture, it just stuck out to me that God already saw him while he was like. I mean, Jesus That's already true. saw him when I was like under a fig um, tree. I'm thinking of Cornelius. No, no. Some, okay, but that's also another example that yeah, you just speaking about okay, that. I thought was also a good one where um, God was like, actually, I like this guy. Like, yeah. there's nothing wrong with him. He's just not a Christian. So just bring him to me. Do you understand? Yeah. So God mm -hmm. sees you. I guess no matter where you are, I love what you're talking about, like God being just mm -hmm. as well. I don't think we often think about that, that God often looks out for the underdogs too, mm -hmm. yeah. even if they're not on our side. He sees all and True. he wants to provide for all in that sense. I have one for you, Jamie. I actually was going to add to David. Okay, I go. Because I feel like it's so interesting when we're talking about the way that God sees David. Because initially the point you raised was where he was overlooked mm. and God is like, no, this is the guy I want. But when David slips up, God has to remind him, I see you. Mm. And even in the case where he took, was it Uriah's wife? And covered up his mm -hmm. sin just by killing him. And he's like, mm -hmm. and God is like, I see you. And send the prophet to him. <laughs> no, and I still like, see you. No, no, like, you're you. still on my side. I yeah. see you. I'm, I'm watching you. <laughs> like, so it's like, I, it's not just like, I see you. I care about you. But also, mm. I want to make sure that you're doing the right mm. thing. Yeah. So it's like that justness of God. I was also going to talk about, say, the children of Israel in a broad sense. Yeah. Um, how intentional mm. God was. And he saw them. He sent different people to speak to them through the generations. Yeah. So it's even from the times of like Samuel, who's there picking them a king. Like this yeah. is all for the people that he sees, like his chosen people. Then you've got Moses who's there to lead them. It's it's funny because it's like, you look at it like God saw Moses because he like trained him and grew him up. But God was raising Moses for the children of Israel. Yeah. So it's like in every element, although he sees Moses, he also sees the children of Israel. So mm. it's like mm. he, even in the sense of like, we came with um, David and the justice, although it's he sees David, he sees Uriah. So it's the way God is showing us that I see all of you. I think another example is Leah. Okay, I feel like they that's did a nice example. Dirty, yeah, and I love how, and she like through her like knowledge, like Jesus came through. Um, 
Yeah, that's. Do you know another nice thing there. though is where in the Bible it also talks about how God opened Leah's womb like some more. Did I have to say that? <laughs> <laughs> Open it more, some more, so that she could have more kids because he was like, I see your husband doesn't see you, but I see. Yeah. And like that was like to, <laughs> to yeah. validate her. I didn't say it right, but it happened. Yeah. Um, but I want to talk about Percy as well. Again, you don't need to like delve too much to so, like when you're in your lowest point in life. But <laughs> for yourselves, like are there the times that you felt like you were overlooked and where God literally showed up and like, nah, I see. You. I have an example. Do you want me to go first? Yeah, yeah I anyone go first as long as it's <laughs> you not go me. first, Lydia. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have an example, but it's when I was in P seven. So that's how we all had to get like picked for prefects. Damn, and I qualify, guys. I was a really, really good like child. Mm. No, it wasn't P seven. It was S six. Like, yeah, it was like sick. Guys, I was even older. Boys and head girls. <laughs> yeah, we did. I didn't go for her boy. I just dirty, went for they prefect. And they're like, they're like, boy. I hope not. <laughs> I ain't gonna forget nothing. I just went for a prefect, which like normally like sixty people get because we had we were like a massive school. Yeah, mm. that's how I got the letter. You were not chosen. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> but what I read was, <laughs> you're not kidding now. But what? <laughs> I read like, you'll never be. <laughs> you'll never be. <laughs> you'll never be a leader. <laughs> Wait, did you? Is that what they said or you? <laughs> they never said it, but that's what I heard. So anyway, we had not <laughs> Sorry. Not because I'm going to like cry. <laughs> not, not from sadness, from laughing. Oh, anyway, we had night vigil that night. Yeah, so <laughs> and I was I was leading worship. So I was probably like, what, 17? Mm. And it was only me and like two other girls because mm. no one else could make it. And I remember right, I was one you of could the girls. make it. No, you weren't. It was two girls that were yeah. not even teens. Yeah. <laughs> I remember because that was a terrible day. <laughs> so anyway, and now cool. Um, yeah, when auntie just came to me, I was like, I want to talk to you. I was like, cool, this is my like childhood auntie. And she was just like, by the way, God has been pressing on my heart to say all these things to you. She was talking about like, babes, you're a leader. Obviously, I cried because I'm a sensitive babe. I said, but I just heard I'll never be a leader. And she was like, you'll be a leader. So anyway, that was kind of one of those examples. But I can laugh about it now. Was not laughing then. Um, but kind of where I was like overlooked or let down. It's a really simple thing. But I mean, God shows up in, in tons of different ways. So I feel like that's one for me. Next. Lydia. No. <laughs> Leah's never been overlooked. That's the grace of God on your life. No, 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 no. Like, we've been there. We've been through it. But mm. I just want to let you guys speak done. first. Okay. Because time is of the essence. I'm screaming. No, I think, I couldn't think of like a really crazy story like that. To be fair, mm. I did go for head girl, right? Do you know what? Fun fact. This is really sad to say. But someone was like, if you vote for me, I'll vote for you, right? <laughs> Don't put their trust in chariots. <laughs> and don't ever listen to that. I'm sorry. Oh my goodness. I voted for them. And my Lord Jesus. Because we have head boy, head girl, deputy head girl, deputy head boy. Hey, too much. <laughs> too much. And then we had house was captains. Picked. Okay. And then you didn't have like prefects and stuff. Right. And these guys were they were crazy with it. Shall I vote for the, voted for the person? They didn't vote for me. I didn't even end up as one of the heads of anything. But with bless God, I'm here standing here today. But my hey, God example. Sees you. Oh, that was your example. <laughs> hey, God. Okay, yeah. No, I was going to take it to be more spiritual. I don't know, but I feel like this laughter. Anyways, I feel like sometimes you're just going through things in life, right? And. Like, yeah, you just go through things in life and then you come to church and you come somewhere and then God is like playing the song that, mm. like, no, like, sorry, the church is playing yeah. the song that you were just like listening yeah. to or the verse, you know, someone said and you're just like, dang. You yeah, yeah, yeah. So you He's so me. intentional. Yeah. I see for me, my biggest God sees me moment of my life, if I might say so. I'm um, <laughs> So I actually had to save the verse because it was a time I was praying. I've, I think I've had a lot of circumstances like that where you feel like overlooked and you know, like somebody's just cursed your whole existence Girl. on purpose. But um, it was when I was praying and God gave me this verse. It was Isaiah 49, verse 16. And it says, a picture of your city is drawn on my hand. You are always in my thoughts. Mm. And I feel like I've never felt so seen as in that moment where God is literally like, you're praying. He, get, he sends you to a word and it's like, I'm thinking about you. Like right there, I was like, "What are you even thinking about me?" <laughs> I'm like, I know I'm praying to you, but I'm like, oh my God! But it's, it's actually like it makes you feel so like not so small anymore. Like I feel like when mm. you realize that God sees you, mm. you realize your significance as well. Because there's mm. how many billions of us here, and it's like God has the time to just make and make you know that He sees you and He knows what's going on in your life. So I think yeah. that that's 
Yeah. That's deep. I was literally about to like ask you guys as well. Um, kind of like what are the symptoms, I guess, of like being overlooked, which I guess you kind of said, mm. um, where you feel small, yeah. insignificant, like there's no future, yep. mm-hmm. purpose in life. Purposeless. Yeah. Anything else? I think just when you've experienced kind of like things are unfair, mm. like unfair to you in a certain way, like, and it's just everything back to back. Like it's not like unfair here and then two years later unfair, but it's just like today, tomorrow, <laughs> next tomorrow, everything is just look, it looks like it's working against you. Um, I think that's one of them, right? Yeah, I would say as well when life just like literally as you're saying, life keeps dishing you like bad hands or like mm. bad cards mm. and you're just thinking like what is going on like yeah. why am i just getting all these things sometimes you even look at god and be like god why me again mm-hmm. like this again something again and that's something that makes you feel like god is not paying attention to me or like nobody is paying attention to whatever is going on on in your life yeah mm-hmm. i think when you're younger you feel these things a lot more because mm-hmm. obviously back then you probably don't know much about god right yeah. and you just look at life you're like why is my life like this? Like you mm-hmm. said, or you think, oh, it's because of me. These all, these things always happen to me. And you kind of brand your entire kind of existence as a teenager to say that you just have a bad luck or you're just not the way. Because I feel like, you know, when I was younger, I had a few hiccups with certain people. And I was just like, why is my life like this? Was I born to have hiccups with you like every single day? Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's never that. I think when you start feeling like that, you need somebody to see you. And to be mm. fair, I'm glad that auntie said it, but it's like, it wasn't coming from her. Yeah. yeah. And that's the, that's the amazing part. Like he always uses someone and you're just wondering like, how? Cause like there was a time, you know, we were in a meeting, um, my camera was off. Jemai was like, precious, why your camera? I said, nothing, I'm good, sir. And like he messaged me and I was like, oh, stop it. Like you I'm saying, <laughs> you yeah. see me. <clears throat> but yeah, like th- things like that. And you know that it's never kind of like, shallow yeah it's coming from somewhere mm-hmm. absolutely and i'm one of those type of people like i'm a f- like i'm a feeler like i feel things and like sometimes like i reach out to certain people mm. but i know it's not like me myself and my abilities it's always kind of like god wanted to reach out to someone exactly. else and he uses like people and stuff like that exactly i was even just gonna say it's all about perspective isn't it mm. like i think the more you know god the mm. more you can see things the way he oh. <coughs> he does that's the more how you feel seen because mm. you'll know how he sees you know mm. how important you are to him mm. so yeah yeah i feel like god is really really intentional about those things mm. and also letting us know yeah. how much he sees us because you know there's verses in the bible where he's like i know the number of hairs on your head like oh i know exactly yeah what's going on with you and i feel like we need that again like you were saying so that we feel like there's hope and purpose in life mm-hmm. and i feel like he also allows us to go through those periods to show up i mean i always say it like god is i don't want to say like he likes a big entrance like he just mm-hmm. likes a dramatic thing where like i'm here like and you can't deny that it's mm. me here so yeah. i think that's one of those things um that he he's definitely so intentional about is showing up personally to every single person mm-hmm. we've spoken a lot and i really want us to start <laughs> rounding up <laughs> nah, i'll start telling we've you about my other traumas yeah. so um but i also want us to kind of speak from a perspective of encouragement now mm-hmm. i know there's a lot of people where i mean we could talk about how we made it out there's a lot of people who are still probably feeling like overlooked overseen um that my time should be here but it's not here my opportunity should be here but it's not here what kind of encouragement can we give to people to be like now nah, god actually sees you and he's going to show up I knew you were looking at me before she even finished the question. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think a good place to start is just commit yourself to the Lord. Because I think I'm going to speak from a perspective of you're a teenager. You probably don't know about God yet. Because I feel like you feel a lot of emotions when you're a teenager, right? Um, so is no matter who you are, no matter what you've done, right? So long mm. as you're willing just to submit everything to God. Look at Saul, who turned Paul later, right? He had persecuted so many questions and, and everything and God still saw him like and and he was ready to drop everything for God so it's about your heart posture just submit it to God right now like if you mm. haven't that's still the first step and you know there are situations that you think you know what I don't think God is gonna answer me I don't think God's gonna listen to me maybe it's because you've done something wrong but again it comes down to just being humble with your mm. heart posture because it says you know he brings the humble closer to him he drops the pride the proud my god <laughs> yeah he drops the proud you know um and the humble you know he's he lifts up the humble he brings the humble closer to him so i think it starts from a place of humility because if Hag- hey guy had sat there and cursed out um sarah which she had every right i mean I mean, <laughs> biblically speaking, <laughs> um, but, but you should have got access, but it's yeah, fine. Yeah, but, but um. the leading of the Holy Spirit is no right. But, you know, 
it, if she like if she had cursed out like Sarah, then then that would have been like her answered prayer, like her answer. Mm. I don't know if God would have showed up later because like now you're satisfied, you're content because you screamed her, her back. But it's just about you know submission and submitting your heart to God. That's the first step, I think. You know, in my opinion, um, don't take matters into your own hands once Eat. again, because it's only going to be temporary. Mm. Let God avenge for yourself. Let God come through for you. Yeah, so I think for myself, um, thank you, Precious, as well. I think for encouragement basis, cling to God and get closer to God. Um, give things time as well, because even though what things may look like naturally or may look like presently in your life may not make sense, may be a bit of a mess and things like that. God is so intentional with the way that he does things and that he'll show you why he's doing these things. The closer you get to God, the closer you allow God to show you what he's doing, the more you understand what's going on and the more you feel seen. Because when God starts making your life all make sense, mm -hmm. you understand how intentional he was with you. So. Mm. Yeah, that's beautiful. And I think as well, you know, we were talking about clean to God, going to God. I think it's being open and honest with God. Mm. God can take it. Like if you actually want to be very, very take honest it, with God, he can it. take it. I mean, he's heard worse. So I think it's really being like God this is exactly how I feel right now this is exactly how I yeah. feel like the situation looks sometimes I feel like you left me I mean David did it he was doing up you yeah. forsaken me God and why why do you hate me do you understand but he came back on the thing of like God you're faithful what can I do you're gonna come through because we do know it's the case but in, in the situation we often struggle to see the light afterwards so it's really really being honest is it's kind of my I don't want to say advice it's my two cents one of my lessons um because I cried Back then, and I will still but cry. Look at where we are Lord. Now. Amen. <laughs> Again. Um, but that's pretty much all for today. We hope you guys enjoyed it. I feel like we enjoyed it. We did. Hell Roy, have the a God laugh. who sees. So we really, really hope that um, there was also some encouragement and stuff that you could take from that. Please follow us on our Instagram at limitless underscore FOL on our YouTube here. You can subscribe down below and follow us on all the other. Social media <laughs> displayed. But let me Thank look you at to you. our editor. He's Do doing you want a great to put it job. On top, of your hands? on top of my hands, like this. <laughs> 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 All right, guys. Thank you so much. Have a lovely day. See you later. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>